Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So, when you hear the word al-dhikr, this word is very interesting, as is, very beautiful, and it is one of the genius of one of the miracles of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the Arabic language to reveal his book. So al-dhikr, it means remembrance. I have to communicate with you through English. So what I did, I went to the dictionary and, you know, grammar resources, and I put remembrance. Tell me what kind of word is remembrance. So number one, it's a noun. Okay? It's a noun. And number two, it's uncountable. It's a noun that's uncountable. And Allah tells us in the Quran, remember me frequently, don't count Allah, right? And number three, it says the act, the act or the process of remembering an event, an event or a person. The act of remembering an event or the process of, the act of or the process of remembering. You know, do you know one of the most fascinating things is when I sat down and tried to understand what's the meaning of the word Quran. You know, if I were to summarize a, a half an hour lecture, this is the meaning of the word Quran. Read me frequently. <laughs> the name of our book is Read Me. It's from Qara'a, Yaqra'u Qur'anan. And when you say Quran, Fu'lan, it means it's done Allah again and again and again. Interestingly, Allah wants us to make dhikr. So a dhikr, remembrance. So if, imagine the word running. Okay, the word running. So I go study running, take an exam in running, take a master's degree in running, PhD in running, but I didn't run. Does that work? It doesn't, right? So remembrance. We can talk about remembrance right now, make it a scholarly lecture and tell you all the types of remembrance. But if we're not doing remembrance, irrelevant. I have a PhD in swimming, but I never dived or swam a day in my life. That's not how you go about these things. So the, the name remembrance invites the action and it puts you at a choice. Remembrance, dhikr, once you say the word dhikr, now you have a choice. You either do it or you don't do it. If you don't do it, then if you take a PhD in that, it doesn't matter. If you do it, then it doesn't matter if you know a lot about it or not academically. It matters that you're actually doing it. And when it comes to dhikr, it's, uh, our ulama said, it's one of the few ibadahs and one of the only one that Allah put the word kathira. Yani there is aqimu salah, but there is no aqimu salata kathira. Kathira means a lot, frequently, frequently. Wa'atu zakah kathira. Wadhabu go to hajj kathira. The only ibadah that Allah put under it's kathira, which means qalila, little. Little is not, is not the point, is not acceptable, is not okay. I don't want you just to make dhikr. I want you to make dhikr kathira. Oh my God. So Allah wants from me to make dhikr and make it frequently. And that's the, the par. The, the par is you do it a lot. It's not you do it. You do it only, it's not enough. You do it a little bit, it's not enough. The par set already for you, high, kathira. So when we say dhikr, subhanAllah, it means remembrance. So that when you say remembrance, then there is an assumption. Who can tell me what's an assumption? If I say you need remembrance, that means what? What has to happen before remembrance for you to need remembrance? Forgetting. Exactly. And you know, forgetting, forgetting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any choice, decision making, in any idea, in any endeavor, in any journey, in anything, is a disaster. Do you know how much Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa did not want to be left without the dhikr of Allah? So, Allah azza wa jalla, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa one of his adhkar, he used to say, Ya hayyu, ya qayyum, O oh, self-standing, self-sustaining, O oh, ever-living, O oh, self-sustaining, bi rahmatika astaghi, I seek, I'm calling like a drowning person for your rahmah, I need it. أصلح لي شأني كله. Fix all of my matters. Fix all of my matters. I don't know. Financial matter, fix it. Social matter, fix it. Relationship, fix it. I don't have a job, fix it. 
I don't, I don't, I can't have children, fix it. I'm not getting married, fix it. Whatever it is, أصلح لي شأني كله. Fix all of my matter. ولا تكلني لنفسي. And don't leave me to myself. Don't make me make a choice based on my nafs. The hawa and the ego and the desires and lusts and whims and all of that. Don't leave me to myself. How long? How long? How long? A blink of an eye. And in another hadith, there is a ziyada or less than that. وَلَا تَكِلْنِي لِنَفْسِي طَرْفَةَ عَيْنِ أَوْ أَقَلَّ مِنْ ذَلِكَ يعني a second or a nanosecond. Do you know that we blink in less than a second? We actually blink in less than a second, in half a second, when you blink. It's faster than the clock. So the Prophet ﷺ said, I don't, want, don't leave me to myself. So if you forget Allah in any idea, endeavor, decision, choice, this, you are in trouble. You are in, in trouble. There is a problem. You, you're going to pay the price. You, no one else is going to pay the price but you. So in order to save yourself from this whole thing, what does Allah want you to do? He wants you to do dhikr. That means you forget. Now, you know that when they try to analyze the word insan, they say it comes from nisyan, the means of the human, insan, meaning forgetful. And they say insan came from uns. Uns means we're social being. I like some company. I like some friends. Give me some, you know, you know that's uns, you know, the, 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 the feeling that you're surrounded by people and people love you and you love them and they respect you and you respect them. That's where the word insan come from. So whether it came from forgetting or it came from uns, meaning socialization, right? That is who we are. We forget. Okay, so we forget. So the beauty of Islam, Allah Azza wa Jal created you. And Allah gave you a gift. That gift is called forgetting. But Allah Azza wa Jal did not want this forgetting, this gift to turn into a curse. So he to give you the gift of forgetting and then he compensated it by telling you make dhikr. What happens if we don't forget? Do you know on average we dump 85% of what happened yesterday, when you go to sleep, you wake up, and then as the days pass by, what you remember goes less, 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 and then it becomes only the major events in your memory. Imagine if you don't forget. One of the things that always, and I, and I heard it discussed tonight in the evening, is um, how can I forget people? Just forget, pe just forgive people, just forgive people. I don't know, but from the wording of the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, and in the ayat of the Quran, I found that only Allah is capable of forgiving. Do you know why? Because only Allah is the only one that no one can hurt him. Do you know why we are incapable of forgiving? Because what? Because when you hurt me, you actually hurt me. <laughs> so you want me to forget that you hurt me? You want me to forgive that? You actually hurt me. So what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did Rasulullah in Sayyidul Istighfar, Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa ant, khalaqtani wa ana abduk, wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'adika ma istata'at, a'udhu bika min sharri ma sana'at, abu'u laka bi ni'matika alayya, wa abu'u bi dhanbi, faghfir li, ya Allah forgive me, fa innahu la yaghfiru dhunuba illa ant, for no one truly forgives but you. That's not my words. That's Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa words. Only one who's capable of forgiveness, actual forgiveness. I'll tell you how we forgive you. You hurt me. I forgive you. Please forgive me, please. I forgive you. Three months later, you make another mistake. You say, I already forgive you. That means you didn't forgive me <laughs> because you brought it up again. Then the third time, I've already forgiven. I can't take it. Please leave me alone. I don't want to be your friend. Don't be with me. This and that. So what, do you know what I found? The only way that we are capable of forgiving is using our strength, forgetting. You know when you forget it, you forgive. Do you know how we try to forgive? Someone hurt me, so now I'm trying to forgive him. Do you know what I do inside my head? So I remember everything that he did for me again, and I relive the experience, then I try to forgive him. Of course you're not forgiving, because you just went through the whole thing all over again. <laughs> you're not capable, so what you need to do? Forget it, just forget, pretend it didn't happen. You're very good at that as a human. You're very good at that. Ask spouses how they forget the good things they've done for each other. You've never done anything good for me. You know, every day we hear that from our spouses on both sides. We are very good at that. So use it for your strength. So Allah give us forgiveness, otherwise we will go crazy. And then Allah told us, but you need this. I want you to forget everything else because it's not important. But one thing you cannot forget. You cannot forget me. فَذْكُرُونِي 
Remember me and I will remember you. You know, it never hit me until I started using, visiting my dad, Rahmatullah Ali, got buried 2004 in September in Five Pillars. And I saw that when I go and visit, you know, you know, you die, your generation is talking about you when you die. The next generation, uh, they talk to you, your kids talk about you less. Then their grandkids who never saw you, and they're not going to talk about you that much. Then great grandkids, can you, can I, if I ask any one of you, can you tell me about your father? You can spend days. Can you tell me about your grandfather? Less. Can you tell me about your great grandfather? Most of us did not see. Can you tell me about your great, great grandfather? Do you know where he lived? Do you know what was his problems? Do you know what he suffered in life? Do you know, do you make dua for him by name? No, you don't even know where he was buried. Don't you think that's you and I in a few years from now? Who's going to remember us? Nobody. Your great grandchildren is not going to even know your name. They're not going to know what you did. So the only one, so Allah Azza wa Jal said, remember me, there will be a time that no one will visit your grave but Allah. And he will send salam to you. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. There will be no one to remember you but Allah. So Allah said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, so remember me. You know, remember me. So, so when you remember Allah, when no one remembers Allah, Allah remembers you when no one remembers you. So immediate application, when you go to the mall, Who's remembering Allah? No one. So start saying, La ilaha illallah. You guarantee some remembrance 50,000 years from now. <laughs> remember Allah when you're at school. Remember Allah when you're walking in the market. Remember Allah when you are in the restaurant. Remember Allah every time you look around and you see not many people believe in La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Wish for them hidayah and then say, La ilaha illallah. So, the application of dhikr depends that we forget. Okay, we forget, we made. So how can we compensate? We make dhikr. Now, this is open-ended. The beauty of Islam, if Allah wants you to do something, he will tell you how to do it. If Allah tells you do dhikr, he will tell you how to do it. How to do dhikr? Allah says, come. Number one, read the Quran. What's the name of the Quran? Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna The remembrance. Yeah, you, for, you forgot Allah? One action number one, read the Quran. And what do we do in Ramadan? We read Quran frequently. And inshallah, we make it a habit, meaning ibadah, but repeated. طيب. Number two, Allah Azza wa Jal, what did he call namaz, dhikr? What did he call salah? Ya ayuha alladhina amanu idha nudiya lis salati mi yawmi al-jum'ati fas'aw ila dhikri Allah. O oh, you who believe when the call is made for salat al-jum'ah, then come to the dhikr of Allah. What did Allah call salah in the Quran? The dhikr. And it's, it's really funny. It's really like for me, it's interesting. Like we wake up in the morning and Allah wants you to align. Okay, I have a God. First thing we do, go to the bathroom, make tahara, make wudu, go and pray sunnah, then go to the masjid and pray fajr. Like it's very interesting way of starting the day. Start the day with what? I have a God. What did Rasulullah say? He said, Afdalu dhikri, the best dhikr. You want to know the best dhikr? Very easy. La ilaha illallah. So what did Allah Azza wa Jal call salah in the Quran? Dhikr. Okay. What is another form of dhikr? Tasbih. After salah, what do we do? Subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Allah akbar, Allah akbar, Allah akbar. So here is a secret that I can help you mathematically to apply the command of Allah, remember Allah frequently. Remember Allah frequently. Okay. How many times do we say subhanallah after every salah? 33, 33, 33 equals 99. And the Prophet sallallahu said, if number 100 you say, la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah, lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamdu wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir, that tamamul mi'ah, meaning that's number 100, Allah will forgive your previous sins, even if they are as much as the flaw, the froth that caused by the waves of the sea and the ocean. طيب. 100 after every salah, how many salah we pray? Five. So now how, how much would we log in now? How much in the bank? 500. How far are you away from kathira? Here is a, a fun fact for you. The largest number that exists in Arabic language is alf, 1000. There is no word in the classical Arabic at the time of the Prophet ﷺ for a number higher than 1000. If you do 1000, you did a lot. You understand? 
So when Allah says Laylatul Qadri Khayrun Min, yani the Alf, the ulama say it's not meant like actually a thousand. Yani Alf is the largest number. What's the largest number now? I hear kids gazillion, bazillion, sajillion, whatever that. I don't know, they could talk like that. So I'm, I think that's a number. Arabic is not my own language. Million, billion, trillion. Da, da, da. So the, what's the largest number in English? The largest number in Arabic is 1,000. Just so that you know. There is no Arabic. Then it becomes Alfain. Thalatha to Alaf. Arba'a to Alaf. Ashra to Alaf. Mi'a to Alf. Alf to Alf. Do you know what's a million in Arabic? A thousand thousand. We don't have a million in Arabic. You understand? Alhamdulillah, we don't. Alhamdulillah. You understand? You know, there, there was an exchange. So, uh, an Arab person uh, got his sister taken as a his hostage of war. So he went to the guy, and he was rich. So the guy, to, so the guy told him. Um, he he asked the guy, "Give me back my sister." He said, "He said, uh, he said, okay, uh, uh, I, I'm going to ask for a large number." He said, "I'll pay you whatever you ask." He said, "Mimi, a thousand golden coin." He said, "Done." People came to him and said, "Are you are you out of your mind?" The guy could have given you 10 more than that. And the, the Bedouin answered, is there a number larger than a thousand? <laughs> I would have asked, but I didn't know. <laughs> this is actually a story that happened at the time of Sahaba. Anyway, so when we say Al-Quran al is a dhikr, Al-Salah is a dhikr, Tasbih is a dhikr, La ilaha illallah. And one of the most uh, authentic in the Quran and uh, in the Hadith, Subhanallah wa alhamdulillahi wa la ilaha illallah wa Allahu Akbar. This is authentic. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah. العظيم كلمتان خفيفتان على اللسان light on the tongue حبيبتان إلى الرحمن beloved to the Rahman ثقيلتان في الميزان heavy in your scale on the day of judgment سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم okay another form of ذكر رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said and I you know my one of the things that I try to do with the people around me is to revive this because most people don't do it is أذكار الصباح and أذكار المساء before sunrise or after sunrise, before, sun, before sunset or after sunset, it's okay. So you do the adhkar, go and search it, but put on YouTube, A-T-H-F-K-A-R, and YouTube will finish it for you. Adhkar al-sabah and adhkar al masa Listen to it frequently, and you will be able to memorize it in a matter of three months, one year. Okay, so now, la ilaha illallah. Why dhikr is the solution? Especially, uh, I read, according to the United Nations, and that in the next 100 years, number one cause for all chronic and non-chronic diseases is stress and depression. Number one cause for chronic and non-chronic diseases, heart attack, blood pressure, diabetes, strokes, all, what? Two things. According to 100,000 studies put together, one result. Number one cause is stress and depression. So why is the best dhikr is la ilaha illallah? I'll tell you why dhikr is the best thing that you need and you need to apply it immediately and enjoy it. It changes your life quality. The quality of your life goes up exponentially. Why? Because this is what, how we live our life. We live our lives as if we are God. We live our life thinking, why do we get stressed and depression? I was trying to read what's the definition of stress. And I found one of the definitions is when the perceived demand exceeds the perceived resource. I have a lot of homework. I'm in college. I go to UC Berkeley. Oh my God, they bombard us, but I don't have enough time. But the resource is not enough. Oh my God, I'm a father. I have four children. I have to pay the bills, but I don't have enough money. Mm. Oh my God, I have to go and walk there and come back and carry all of that stuff, but I don't have enough strength you know this is what stress is what is stress oh my god i'm gonna, I'm gonna I, I need to pay the bills but i don't have a job and if i don't have a job i'm not gonna be paying the bills because i don't have enough Try, go around you're gonna come back to the same point as a believer how in the world can the perceived demand exceed the perceived resource if your resource is allah How? Do you know what's the effect of La ilaha illallah on you? Is that Allah is the biggest, like the provider. Like, 
So how many names? Al-Kareem, Al-Mu'ati, Al-Razzaq. يعني Allah, every name secures your, your uh, every name of Allah secures a fear. Oh my God, I'm not going to, Al-Razzaq. Come down, come down, come down. I'm your Al-Razzaq. Oh, I don't have, I, I'm not, he, she made a lot of money, he made a lot of money. Al-Mu'ati. So, shh, shh. Al-Mu'ati, I'm going to give you, don't worry. Like, uh, oh my, oh, I, uh, he got a gift. She inherited from her fear. Someone gifted her a hundred thousand. Al-Wahhab, I'm going to give you a gift. Shh. Okay. So every name secures a different fear inside you. So that's why the dhikr with the names of Allah is one of the most beautiful dhikr. <coughs> As we learn from the sunnah. What is depression? If you ask me, this is not a scientific definition. If you ask me, me, what's the definition? I try to analyze uh, depression. It's when the perceived pain exceeds the perceived tolerance. This is too much for me. I cannot take it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check out. I'm going to go to sleep, and I'm going to do this. I can't take this. As a matter of fact, I might want to end up end my life. When the perceived pressure and sorrow and pain exceeds what you perceive you can handle. It's all perception, by the way. My dear brothers and sisters, if our brothers and sisters in Gaza can handle what they are handling, we have nothing to complain about. We were just talking about the people of Gaza, and I really thank uh, the brothers and sisters at Miftah for bringing this up and for their fundraising. We don't want to be detached from reality. You think Allah will be happy with us sitting down in a nice in the West Coast, when nice and air conditioned and chairs and talking about Allah, when our brothers and sisters getting slaughtered and we're not helping them? That's hypocrisy. So I'm really happy that there was some program. I didn't know that, but Jazakumullah khair, Barakallahu feekum. As someone who lost his entire family, in the second war in Gaza, I say Jazakumullah khair. May Allah reward you. May Allah reward you. May Allah reward you. Because I want our youth, the young and the old, the men and the women to be attached to reality. Wallahi, someone sent me a, 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 a YouTube today and translated to English. I'm going to send it to one of the miftah. You can send it to the registrants if you wish. And it, it's, it's interview with children, nine years old, girls and boys. Nine, ten maximum 11. Subhanallah, because the tragedy was very high, they matured very fast. So they're saying, they're asking them, what did the war teach you? The first boy said, how dear Palestine is to us. It's a holy land. And we will give whatever it takes to save a holy land. The next girl, what did the, this, what did the war teach you? Oh, I learned the importance of Salah. And I learned the importance of Dhikr. Because you know why? Because I always ask myself, uh, did I say la ilaha illallah? Did I say la ilaha illallah? Because the next thing, maybe a bomb will fall on me and kill me. Was the last word la ilaha illallah? So I keep on saying la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an Rasulullah. Subhanallah. Walhamdulillah. Because I keep on hearing and I say, is the next bomb going to kill me? So maybe I should. Oh my God. Nine years old talking like that. Where did her childhood go? But what a maturity. So if they can handle what they're handling with la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, and with the dhikr of Allah and with the Quran, let's shape up, brothers and sisters. We live on the same planet. We live at the same time. We're not talking about a thousand years ago they bombed Gaza. They're doing it right now. We live at the same time, at the same planet, at the same context. If they can do it, we can do it. And believe me, no matter what is bothering you, if you just allow yourself not to act like God and let Allah be Allah and let you be the Abd, and when you are overwhelmed, you say, Ya Allah, Ya Kareem, Ya Azim, Ya Arham al Rahim, help, I need help, I cannot do it, and then stop thinking about it. You know what we do? We do dhikr, but we do the wrong type of dhikr. We have a problem, something stressing us or depressing us. Do you know what type of dhikr we do? We do the dhikr of the problem. Why she keeps on talking to me like that? Why she keeps on talking to me like that? Why she keeps on talking? Oh my God, I'm sick. Oh my God, I'm sick. Oh my God, I'm sick. Oh, what's going to happen? Oh my God, do I have cancer? Do I have this? Oh my God, I'm sick. Oh my God, I lost my job. 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 I won not enough money. Not enough money. Not enough money. Not enough. What, what, what are you doing? Do you know what you're doing? Vicar of the problem. MashaAllah, you're from a dhakiri. But the wrong type of vicar. You know what you need to do every time that thought pierces, shoots like an arrow and goes into your heart, you say, La ilaha illallah. What is it? I'm not going to pay the bills? Who dies from hunger in America? Who's, who died? Who's, we all need to lose weight. Look at me. 
Like 20 pounds of like, I hate these last 20 pounds. They won't go away. And it doesn't matter. I eat, I don't eat this and that. And then the Afghans keep on feeding me the Afghan rice. And the Arabs keep on eating the Arab bread. And this, I don't know where to go. And what's our problem? We need to lose weight when our brothers and sisters in Palestine are dying from hunger. What's the problem? And you know what? We are living an amazing historical moment. The historical moment is Allah chose us for these times. We were not born at this time and place by mistake. Na'udhu billah, nastaghfirullah. And this time Allah created it for us and Allah created us for this time. Do you know what that means? It's through us that this ummah has to revive. It's through us that Palestine has to be liberated. It's through us that this country, this country has to become truly at least once the best country in the world. Do you know who can make America great again? Muslims. I got you, Trump. I got your back. We will make America great again, for sure. I swear to God, they, they, they took Jesus, even, okay, we're Muslims, we don't believe Jesus is God. They took Jesus out of the equation. They used to say when you sneeze, God bless you. Now, bless you. What happened to God, right? No, bless you. Who's going to bless me? Can you please tell me, am I going to bless myself? Are you blessing me? Is the neighbor blessing me? Who's blessing me? Have a safe journey. Who, who's going to, uh, where, where do I find a habit? Have it where? Where, in which drawer is the safe journey? Where? Oh, have a nice day. Oh, do you think if I can have a nice day, I would have not have a nice day? What the hell are you talking about? All, even in the language to take Allah out of the equation, God, take him out of the equation. You're going to have a nice day. You, oh, believe, this is the worst one. Believe in yourself. Which part? <laughs> Kidneys, liver, the hearts, brain, stomach. Which part believe? Believe in yourself what? I believe in myself, you, you, you can do, I mean, but, but and, and, and you know, because Allah Kareem, they think they're doing it. When you succeed, you don't know that Allah gave you the smartness and the looks and the personality and the height and the time and the resources that Allah giving you and you are using all of Allah's resources, including your body, and you're saying, I did it. No, you didn't do it. There's nothing to believe. I believe in myself. I believe I'm gonna die very soon. That's what I believe. I believe I can't help myself. That's what I believe. But they confuse that with confidence. Islam wants you to be confident, but doesn't want you to believe in yourself. I believe in Allah. Oh my God, if I believe in myself, I can't help myself. So this is the situation. But why? They don't want you to make dhikrullah. They took the word Allah from the equation. So dhikr is very beautiful. You can make dhikr with your aql. We live in the Bay Area. Please go out to nature and watch nature and make a ibadah called tafakkur fi khalqillah. Remember, please make in your heart tadabbur fi kitabillah, in your heart and mind. Think about the book of Allah, analyze it, and please make with your tongue takarrur of dhikrillah azza wa jal. I want to share with you an ayah that shows you how hard and difficult is dhikr. And you tell me how hard is and difficult. And I will end with this because in the best word is the word of Allah. Allah azza wa jal says, truly in the creation of the skies and the earth, and the, the variation in the day and the night are truly signs for people with hearts. Who are these people? الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ Allah. They are يَذْكُرُونَ and Allah brought the present tense. It's in Arabic called present continuous tense. الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ الله. Are you ready? Listen how difficult it is. Qiyaman, standing up. Number two, وَقُعُودًا, while sitting down. Allah is praising you for remembering him while? How difficult is that? I think it's very difficult. Can you say La ilaha illallah? Muhammad Rasulullah. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanallah al -Azim. You are included in the ayah now. You made dhikr while you're sitting down. The third one, I really don't want you to do it, but when you go home, you do it. Wa ala junubihim, laying down. Laying down. Wa <laughs> ala Junubihim, on their side. You see how difficult is dhikr? Do you see how difficult? Standing up, walking, sitting down, and do you think Allah is talking about salah? He's not talking about qiyam, ruku' sujood. He's talking about standing, sitting, and laying down. Kicking it, like right, sitting down, right? Subhanallah, wa ala junubihim, wa yatafakkaruna fi khalqi samawati wal And they reflect on the creation of the heavens and the earth. رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا Ya Allah, you did not create this in vain. سُبْحَانَكَ فَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ You have a purpose. 
Brothers and sisters, we can beat it. We can beat, inshallah, stress. We can beat depression with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I am very uh, aware that there is a type of depression and stress that needs doctors and that needs help. So I'm not uh, discrediting that, but I'm talking about a way of life. There is the rule and there is the exception. The rule, Allah gave us something. This, the, the world's problem can only be solved with, with this. Now, subhanAllah, people, they look at the Buddhist, they sit down and they put their hands like that on their, on their, on their, oh, oh my God, that's so cool. First of all, I, I took the hands, I, I actually talked to a Buddhist monk, I said, do you actually do that? He said, yes. He said, do you know what is that? He said, no, I don't know. I said, this is Alif, Lam, Lam, Ha, Allah. That's number one. Number two, I need to teach you the beginning of whom. It's Allahum. Probably Buddha was a prophet or messenger. I don't know. We know Jesus didn't tell people, I'm God, so worship me. And people say he said it. People now talk about Buddha. Did Buddha say that? There's actually very big hint, very big clear that God is one in the books of Buddha. So the idea here. Be impressed with yourself. Ramadan is coming. And here is the final thing because I was asked to connect the whole thing with Ramadan. What does hunger in Ramadan remind you of? Mm. Do you know what 99% of Muslims, including myself, right? So I don't want to bad mouth Muslim. Do you know what 99% of us think? Oh, what's in iftar? Biryani. Samosa. What you're thinking, your natural, your natural state is to remember food. That's fine. That's not haram. But do you know if you stop there, there's no difference between you and the cat in your house? She goes, meow. Okay, time for food. You put food, she goes and sleep and kicks it in the house that you built for it. Do you know that if food, if hunger and thirst in Ramadan, do you know I believe that Allah Azza wa Jal exposes us to ourselves through the act of fasting. Look what happens to you. You know, the brothers, you know, they go and eat like a steak, like 32 ounce steak. Then they go to the gym and then, and then they look, they walk up, mashallah, like a bull, right? I'm strong. Right? Take that food away from them one day, two days, three days, and they'll be walking like this. Oh, please, I need a steak. Where is it, you know? So that's the situation. What happens, what happens when you don't eat? You, you see the human in the raw. What happens when you don't drink? You see the human in the raw. What happens when you don't sleep? You see the human in the raw. What happens when you are exhausted? You see the human in the raw. And what's the human in the raw? Is what Allah said, وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا And the human has been created weak. Who's Al-Qawi? Who's Al-Qawi? Uh, are you shy to say it? Who's Al-Qawi? Who's al azim Who's al mateen Who's al awwal Who's al akhir Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, we were able to make dhikr together. Even finally, Jazakumullah khair. Sorry for taking over time. Salam.